Today, Scott has joined me for part two on him showing me how the basics of antenna theory work. And we're going to show how the radio wave inducts or induces a signal onto the antenna. I, I think I said that wrong. We're just going to let him show us on Take Radio. So play that awesome intro video. A quick shout out to all my Patreons who make this show possible. You can support me by joining Patreon in the link below. And on to Tank Radio! So now this is the radiation pattern coming into the antenna. It will still, in oh, yeah. it will still induce the electric field, but it's going to induce it, and then that's what we read from our radios. Yes, and then we'll, get the that. we'll get to that next. Oh, go ahead. Here I have a receiving antenna. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing. It's our nice, happy little dipole hanging out there in free space. Um, but as I said, the electric field actually travels with a magnetic field around it. Now, there's the right-hand rule and the left-hand rule about magnetic fields. And essentially, it's whichever way the electric field is going, positive to negative, mm -hmm. the magnetic field is perpendicular to it, making a, a circle around it in the direction of your fingers. So and we'll actually use that coming up here when we determine which way electric can you, or the magnetic can you, field is going to induce a charge. Can you explain mm -hmm. that one more time with the right-hand rule? I got you up on full screen. <laughs> okay. Uh, the right-hand rule, pretty sure it's the right-hand rule. I'd have to check it again. The right-hand rule is your thumb is the direction that the electric field is from negative outward or something. Um, and the... Fingers represent the way that the magnetic field is curling around that electric field. There's the, we'll get into this in a minute. It's also called the left hand rule of generators because that's what we're dealing with here is the generator. So as I said, here's our dipole. Um, here is essentially a radio wave tuned to be the same wavelength as the antenna, although graphically it doesn't look that way. That uh, radio wave has got a magnetic field that's traveling with it. When we get far enough away from the original transmitter, we can regard all those electric fields as pretty much perpendicular to the antenna. You don't have to consider that they're curved. Now, what we have here is a magnetic field, which I've written, uh, which I've drawn in green going away from us. And up here, I have it in red which coming toward us. It's in green here because this wave is going in one direction. And then the red one over here is coming from the wave as it's going down in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. But if we use our right hand rule right in here, the antenna, which is right here is the conductor. It's going to move in the direction where the thumb is pointing. So where the, where the conductor breaks through this magnetic line, this green arrow line, along with your index finger pointing in the direction that the magnetic field is going, your middle finger is going to indicate the direction that the charge that's being induced on the conductor is going to be pushed. Okay. One more time. I, I got it. The left-hand rule. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's for a generator. Now, it would be the right-hand rule if we had the electric field moving and the wire stationary. But in this case, it's the wire is moving relative to the magnetic field. We consider the magnetic field stationary in order to use the left-hand rule. Mm -hmm. I put plenty of pauses in here, and then I'm pausing it on top of that. <laughs> yeah. It gives us more time to chat. Make sure that uh, you understand what's going on here. There was a fly that almost flew by my camera. I was like, I want it. All right, okay. here we go. Here we go. Now, as I said, the green ones represent where the where the electric field's going up. Uh -huh. where he's induced a magnetic field. The red ones indicate where he's going down. Every time one of these magnetic fields crosses the antenna conductor, he's going to push an electric charge. And you can see as he approaches, because the magnetic field is actually continuous. Mm -hmm. Although if I tried to draw it continuous, it would just be a big sloppy mess. 
So where the electric field or the electric field is generating a magnetic field and where it's coming toward us, the left hand rule says it pushes the charge to the top. Mm -hmm. Now, as it starts to continue down, now the magnetic field's the other way and it's pushing the charge to the bottom. Now imagine if we had a wire, two wires actually, that were connected right between the dipole as a charge is being moved back and forth it's going to sit there and oscillate back and forth like that and cause the exact same wave frequency that's being generated by or that's being picked up by the, by the antenna to be fed into your antenna feed line so that's how you're receiving the signal interesting now if you really want to make things complicated what we're seeing here is a charge that's moving up and down the antenna. Uh -huh. If we go back to the beginning, remember charges moving up and down an antenna will generate an electric field and it'll transmit. Mm -hmm. So not only is this antenna receiving a signal, but it's actually retransmitting a signal too. Hmm. And that starts to get really hairy in mathematics. Well, I don't want to go down that hole. I just want to explain I, the, the simple I concepts. Didn't, I didn't <laughs> go down that hole because I just studied this as an undergrad. I didn't want to go any deeper in it. Okay, I'm understanding this now. And more, it's, it's starting to click in my head better and better. Do you have any, a, a, anything else, another animation? No, that kind of wraps it up for the animation. We can uh, play with them again if you want. No, so, so it, the... It is the electric field coming off the antenna generating the radio wave. The electric field also induces a, um, just by being an electric field, induces a magnetic field around it. Right. So now, mm -hmm. if, you, if you listen to people talk about uh, radio signal strength, they usually measure it in volts per meter. If you've got, you know, a two meter antenna like, like we have in our original animation for a, uh, a two meter, well, it's a one meter antenna because it's half wave for a two meter band mm -hmm. and you generate 100 volts uh, from top to bottom when it's when the energy is peaked from one end get my hands in here when the energy is peaked from one end to the other uh, you've got 100 volts per meter mm -hmm. so you take a little field strength meter you travel out some distance and you tune it to something and they're sitting there measuring it and they're going oh look i'm getting you know Three, 33 microvolts per meter of signal strength. Mm -hmm. So they're actually measuring the strength of radio signals in various places in volts per meter. They're not measuring it in, in magnetic douse. Uh, and mm -hmm. As I understand it, I'm not absolutely sure, but it's not until that electric field crosses the, uh, or hits, impels itself on the antenna conductor that the magnetic field uh, comes into play. Well, I thank you for coming on and explaining this to me and everyone out there. Um, this is the time I usually give the floor to you to tell us what you're up to or if you want to promote anything. So I'm going to still give you the floor and tell us what's going on and do you want to promote anything? What projects do you have going on? Um, in ham radio, I don't really have any big projects going on. Um, got a little electric car that I'm playing with. Uh, friend of mine calls it a toy car because it runs on batteries. So I'm digging into that to try to figure out how, how that kind of system works. Created a little website, which I'm not promoting yet. It's just called unforeseenproductions.com. And I do some drone shots. I've, I've done some special projects, this kind of educational stuff, training videos, weddings, stuff like that. Oh, it's awesome. a side job. It's not, uh, it's not a primary source of income. Maybe when I retire. <laughs> uh, well th thank you again Scott for coming on I appreciate it I learned something I hope all, all y'all out there learned something also so right. say maybe bye if we, maybe if we uh, get the urge we can actually try to do something with SWR yes that will be the next one okay tank radio beam me up well, that's it. Thank you, Scott, for coming on here. If you have any other ideas or aspects of a basic antenna theory or just basics of amateur radio, let me know. and I'm going to see if I could dig up an expert for, you know, them to come on and teach me. And then that means I, you also have that knowledge. So you know what's going on. So thank you for joining. Thank you to all my Patreon supporters. You can support me on Patreon. There is a link in the description below. 
and to all my tankers out there, go forth and conquer.